welcome our panelist. Please let's welcome with a huge round of applause, Dr. Ipsita Chatterjee, Head Innovation Development and Brand Strategy, Lotus Herbals. Let's welcome Ruchika Gupta, Chief Marketing Officer, Luminous Power Technologies. Mr. Sandeep Ranadi, Executive Vice President and Head of Quantitative Research, Hansa Research Group. Mr. Shivam Ranjan, Head of Marketing, India, Motorola Mobility. Mr. Vineet Kapahi, Head of Marketing, Aviva, India. And Nupur Gupta, Head LTV Products and Partnerships, Sports Village. And let's welcome uh, our moderator for the session. Please give it up for Mr. Sudhakar Rao, Director, Branding, ICFI Group. Thank you. Thank you for being an amazing MC for the entire day. Uh, we are actually <clears throat> done with 75% of our sessions. Thank you so much. I think I would like to, I would like to congratulate a big round of applause you, you, you are requested to raise for the people sitting in this beautiful box onto this extreme. They're actually running this show. A big round of applause for them. And these uh, youngsters who are sitting in the front table, it's called reserved, but they are actually working very, very hard to make the entire show run on time. Thank you so much for all of you. And also the entire audience who have been so patient. Post lunch, it is the biggest challenge, either to build brands. Build brands for afternoon is extremely difficult. Building about brands for tomorrow is probably easier. So thank you very much for staying awake. Uh, even after that wonderful lunch. Either the lunch is very good or you're not sleeping. Which one is right? Anyway, don't answer that. <laughs> uh, I, 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 want to, I want to actually uh, announce that this is a very, very uh, large uh, uh, esteemed uh, panel. This is the largest panel on the planet. Okay. Are you listening? Thing. This is the largest panel on earth. Okay. Yeah. Now, now what we, what we want to start is, I'll just turn my chair and I request all the esteemed panelists to give a brief pitch about what they do as part of their business. Uh, it should be, it should be an half of the elevator pitch without using any jargon, without using any technical words. To a simple, uh, uh, a simple, simplified uh, message to a common man, how would you introduce yourself? You have mics in front of you. We'll start from Vinit. Uh, we are in the uh, uh, industry of financial investment. So uh, uh, we, what we do simply, if I would really put a core in terms of what is it, you know, we. Uh, with a purpose, and I have the purpose basically very clearly articulates. It's as simplistic as could be with you today for a better tomorrow. What we do is we look at your financial planning in a sense that we are able to give you a better tomorrow. Thank you. Vinid is into life insurance. Next. Hi, I'm Shivam Ranjan, uh, and I work for Motorola, which is in the business of selling smartphones, mobile phones. Wonderful. Next, please. <laughs> and. Uh, just a brief background about Motorola and what we do. So uh, Motorola is one of the oldest uh, brands in the mobile ecosystem. It's about 93 plus years old now. Uh, and one of the most innovative brands of all time. Uh, the first ones to uh, actually create a mobile phone, a cellular phone. And not just that, in fact, a lot of people might not know this, but they were the first ones to, the, the famous words that we heard from Neil Armstrong uh, on the moon, uh, which is uh, one small step for mankind, uh, one small step for man and a giant leap for mankind. These, those were said by uh, transport, uh, you know, those were transmitted on a Motorola transponder. So, uh, so always stood for innovation. And I think uh, what we do as an organization and through our products is to create meaningful consumer uh, experiences 
to enable them to achieve uh, whatever they want to achieve in their life. So uh, that's the vision. And uh, as part of the marketing team for Motorola, uh, we try and ensure that we take these devices to as many people in India as we can. Hi, I'm Sandeep from Hansa. Uh, what we do is we connect brands to their consumers and give them what the consumers think or what the consumers experience from the brands and help them grow. Hi, so I'm a client of Hansa's. Uh, I'm Ruchika representing Luminous Power here. Uh, and we use the insights that people like Sandeep and others uh, generate and uh, um, you know help consumers live uninterrupted lives. We are in the business of power, power storage, power generation. So inverters, batteries, solar power uh, for residential solutions. Hi, I'm from Sports Village. Our purpose is to get kids to play. Uh, we work with 1500 schools in India to run physical education curriculums in the country. Uh, and with that network, we help brands use this access to kids through the school network and bring their purposeful campaigns to life by engaging and reaching kids and thereby their parents. Hi, I'm Dr. Ipshita Chatterjee. I work for Lotus Service Private Limited. Lotus is the pioneer in the beauty industry, and it has been synonymous with green, clean, ethical beauty since time forever. It's been three decades now. We are now a branded house and a house of brands of about seven in-house brands, and also we have 12 sub-brands. Uh, we uh, believe in true beauty, conscious consumerism, and at the same time, for us, transparency is non-negotiable. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think this introduction has been very good. Uh, there are instructions that we are supposed to maintain social distance. Can we move this side, please? Uh, the fourth wave is about to hit us. Come here. Please, please. <laughs> please come here. Keep laughing and come this side. And we'll so, so uh, <clears throat> often we have used the words like VUCA. Uh, the business environment has been uh, volatile, uncertain, uh, complex, and ambiguous. We all know VUCA, right? Uh, you heard of uh, BANI? The marketing environment has been quite uh, uh, brittle, anxious, uh, nonlinear, and incomprehensible. That's what these are all terminologies, but I think to describe a business environment vis-a-vis -a, -vis a marketing environment, these are really true in today's uh, scenario. Now, how brands navigate through these difficulties and how do they build brands and make sure that you're building brands for tomorrow on one hand. On the other, how do you align your brand vision with the business growth? I think these are the challenges. So each one of us will take some time to respond to some of the very important aspects. What are the important aspects here? One is on, to, on, on positioning. How is brand positioning understood and perceived and conceived in today's times? Brand positioning is no longer a theoretical one-liner. You may agree or disagree with me, but we'll have to respond to the audience now. Uh, <clears throat> is it a one-liner? Brand positioning, is it a one-liner? According to me, it is not, it's old school. I think we will have to communicate and uh, think of a story for the entire brand and then probably narrate that uh, instead of one-liners and, and unidirectional kind of uh, statements that we originally thought of. Brand positioning originally has been ABC. A is audience, B is benefit, and C is a compelling reason why we should buy that particular brand. So those, the core aspects will remain, but the way we communicate will, will change that. Any, res, any initial response from each one of you on this, and then we'll get into something specific. When you are responding, if you have any stories with respect to your own work and your own brand, that would be much more interesting for us. Yavinit. See, I, I, I believe that, uh, uh, and I did say that uh, brand has to clearly have, in fact, uh, a lot of esteem analyst before me also came and said that clearly has to have a purpose. Uh, a purposeful brand has to solve a problem or an issue in hand. Uh, you may have uh, a great products or great services, but if it's not actually doing either of the two, then it cannot become a great brand. Uh, also, also uh, the one thing that you really need to look at is 
the audiences today are not really looking at what you have to offer. The audiences are basically looking at how are you going to make their life easier. And uh, it's not about sitting in boardrooms and talking about positionings or talking about purposes and all that stuff. That's one part of it. You may do all that, but uh, whatever you're communicating to a consumer, if you do not breathe, live within the organizations across all people, then it really doesn't solve anything. I think the first and foremost is in, inside the organization, everybody has to know what is that one particular thing that you're going to do for the customers before you go out and really talk about it. It has to be authentic. It can't be just a show. And unless it is authentic, uh, I mean, I'm sure consumers who evolved that they can just see through brands and companies as we speak right now. Yeah, is there any one authentic th thing that you have championed in your organization with respect to purpose? So, uh, see what we do. Uh, I, I'll give you an example. I mean, it's a very, uh, it's a very uh, interesting and a very, uh, I would say, a, a, a difficult category for consumers. Financial investments today is a very, very difficult category. I mean, everybody sitting here today possibly will think that you know they have their financial investments in place, but is is it really in place? You really need to ask yourself. Uh, do you know whether you are very well planned for a, a, a great future for yourself or not? I mean, that's a question people need to ask. Specific to a category, I can tell you either people sitting here would be, and we are all educated, either would be either not insured or underinsured. Do you, do you know what your human life value is today? Uh, I, I don't think a lot of people do that. What we are trying to do is we are trying to sort of get to a consumer and tell him what his human life value is all about. And unless you go to that person, he will realize that, oh, you know, uh, I really don't, did not know that, you know, this is the sort of a value I need to really look at if I were to sort of uh, plan for the future. Uh, I, think, I think that's extremely important. We do that. We really tell a consumer what his human life value is all about and tell him whether he needs it or does not need it. Finances per se is a very closed chapter when it comes to the Indian context. People are very, very close to talking about their financial to anybody outside. What we are trying to do is we're trying to educate consumers that you can go about and talk about financial investments. And in that financial investments, sort of look at where in your life cycle do you stand today so that you're able to do the right investments. I think that's that's one thing that sort of is something we've been doing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll, we'll now request uh, Dr. Ipsita actually to explain, is there anything unique that your brand has done? For example, you may be blessed to be in a particular category which is uninfluenced and unaffected by certain vagaries of business environment. But all those people who are in health and wellness uh, are not necessarily great in their purpose and those who are not are actually weak in their purpose. It's not true. Is there anything unique when you compare yourself with the rest in your category how uniquely you would have actually championed certain things that probably tells that your purpose is much greater and you're well connected to your purpose. Do we know anything? Could we learn anything from you, from your category and your own business? Sure. Uh, so basically in the beauty and personal care space, you would see that currently the terms like conscious consumerism, green beauty, clean beauty, all of these terms are coming in popularity today. But uh, Lotus has always been the pioneer and has championed these causes ever since the launch of the brand, which was about 30 years ago. I think the greatest asset what we have done as a brand is saying true to our values and also not getting affected by whatever is happening in the market. You know, Albert Einstein has very interestingly quoted and he said that, you know, intelligence is measured by the ability to change. And that's how we have survived all these years. We are adaptable, we are nimble, we are agile. For instance, I would like to give you an example in particular. So, you know, uh, beauty and personal care was one of the top 10 industries which was worst hit by the pandemic. Every industry suffered very badly. However, we took quick changes and we also decided that the digital transformation has to happen very quickly. So, you know, such transformations take about nine to 10 months or maybe 12 months. We finished it within three months itself. And now uh, within two, three years of its in 
Inception, Lotus Botanicals I'm talking about. It's a pure D2C brand. It is number one on every e-commerce platform. Secondly, what we also did was we realized that, you know, the world is moving towards Ayurveda, health and wellness. So that's when we decided in 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic, we acquired luxury beauty brand Soul Tree, which is based on Ayurvedic recipes. It's world's first certified organic Ayurvedic brand. Similarly, uh, you know, for the categories of Gen Z, we know that the demographics is changing very rapidly. So we realized that the importance of Gen Z as a consumer has been neglected for quite a while. And that's why we came up with this brand called Ikai Beauty, which is very Gen Z centric, the kind of products they would like to use, the kind of products they would enjoy. We communicate with them in their language. So I think adaptability change is very important and understanding that different target groups have different kinds of aspirations from the products. And that's how, like you said, non-linear is the way to go forward. The visual positioning, the product positioning, the price positioning, everything is absolutely non-linear these days. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ipsita. Uh, we'll now request uh, Nupur to, to come in. Your sports village and uh, the kind of network that you have with all the schools and the schools as captive audience, you give access to various brands Brands come to them and talk to them and pitch their campaigns. What actually is the purpose of your organization? Forget about the purpose of those brands who come and pitch and use them as captive audience. That's a different story altogether. But what is your purpose? How consistent have you been? And what have been the achievements? And how do you measure that impact? Our purpose is to get kids to play. We started 19 years back with this very simple purpose that kids need to play unstructured, structured, whatever, but we need to create opportunities for them to play, whether it is just going out into the ground and playing, having a structured match play opportunities. Then that's how we link that access with the brands to help them live out their purpose in the schools. As an example, we saw Tata T earlier talk about the Jago Ray campaign. Now that's not just content on social media. We help them walk that talk on ground through our school access by creating a Tata Tea Suraksha campaign, in which at that time, Jagore campaign was centered around women empowerment, self-defense. So we created self-defense program uh, classes, which was run for one lakh girls in 340-odd schools across the country, where the safety then came to, into their own hands with free activism rather than being reactive about it. So that's how we help brands live out their purpose inside the schools. As an example also, climate change, which a lot of brands have talked about today. We also do a program called Green Medal Pil uh, Program, where uh, the idea is that children, as again, uh, Puneet spoke about, are the change agents for the future. Do you have the Green Medal with you? Yes. Uh, so this is a very special medal, uh, which has been made out of recycled plastic. So we conduct play-based modules inside the schools, where through fun play-based activities, teach kids about it's a three bin system, where to recycle, how to recycle. And then at the end of that activity, whether it's a relay race, at the end of it, they deposit the waste in the right bin, they get these medals. And that helps, you know, take that message to the parents, keep that conversation alive and engage with them as well. So uh, it's simple programming and uh, with play has that power to integrate any program, whether it is hygiene, menstrual health. For how many years you've been running this? So the company has been alive for 19 years and so on going forward. Uh, okay, what, what are the brands which you said no to? In, in alignment with your purpose and your vision, yeah. you would have had to say no to certain brands because certain brands make products with, which, which are unhealthy exactly. to the kids at least because that's the segment that you have. Yeah. Did you ever say no? Yeah, so uh, aligning with the right brands is very important for us because we stand for sports and play, which is the connotation of health, right? And brands do approach without name dropping approach about just sampling to the kids, which is not what we stand for. We have to create programming, which schools see as something that they can take inside the school. The kids, it's valuable for them. And the parent, it can delight the parents that my pa child is learning something new. So therefore, it, we, cannot, we are not doing just sampling. We are taking the whole brand purpose into the school integrated curriculum. Therefore, Excellent. giving them a guaranteed yeah. access to all kids. Great. It is your purpose as well there. Yeah. 
I, in fact, I'm more interested in your purpose because you as an organization have stuck to certain rules and vision and allowed only certain kind of people to look at the kids. Yeah. And, and then you are giving a greater opportunity for the kids to look at these opportunities, imbibe, transform, and probably take action when they, when they grow up. Probably that's the purpose that yes, you have. Yes, absolutely. With yeah. just keeping play as central and school yeah. as a center play. of action. Play is a tool. Play is a tool, but purpose is extremely clear. Okay, I request, uh, I request uh, Shivam to come in and tell us if there's anything that we can learn. Uh, in the face of adversity, how did you align your, uh, your vision, vision of the brand with the business growth uh, targets that you have? Uh, was there any dissonance? If so, how was that managed? How was that navigated through? Sure. I think that's a great question. And uh, I think, like I said, Motorola, uh, as an organization, has seen big highs in, in the past. We were uh, one of the largest selling mobile smartphone uh, uh, OEMs in the world. And then we saw challenging times where the business had to take a step back and then come back again. Uh, the purpose, although I believe, has always remained the same, right? And I think that is, that is important uh, for the sake of any organization. So the purpose has always been use of innovation to create meaningful consumer experiences, uh, which was behind us inventing the mobile phone in the first place to create those meaningful consumer experiences. The first to make a 5G device, the first to make a foldable device. So I think the purpose has remained the same and the steps that we have taken as a business as well as uh, in terms of consumer communication has been in sync with the purpose. But yes, in terms of, uh, you know, making those claims, so for example, innovation, right, requires R&D investments, it requires a lot of um, investment, especially when the time is uh, difficult for an organization, that becomes something that becomes uh, less of a priority for many organizations. However, at Motrola, we believe that we have to stay true to our core, uh, true to our purpose, which is why we continue to invest in innovation uh, to to give consumers things that were differentiated and therefore able to create differentiated consumer experiences. Now, some examples there. <clears throat> you know, the first example that I would like to say is we are actually, and a lot of people might not, not know this, <clears throat> but we are the first brand in the world to actually make a 5G call, right? So, not Samsung, not Apple, it's Motorola. And that happened in 2019, as, as recent as 2019. So we've been continuing to invest, even in difficult times in R&D, to be ahead in terms of technology, in terms of capability, in terms of ensuring that the products that we give to the consumers are no compromise, and we are enabling meaningful consumer experiences, which is what we are doing till this day. Wonderful. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Keeping, keep, keep, keeping your focus on the customer, being customer-centric, even when you go through difficulties. We'll request uh, Rochika Gupta, who has already taken the mic to respond now, uh, <laughs> uh, see, again, category discussions that we started with, Vineet, basically, there, there is one category which says, I innovate, you benefit. I make molecules and therefore you are alive. As if that particular organization or category does not take home any money. The purpose is much, much, much bigger. And there's another category of businesses and brands and organizations. Just for the sake of uh, scoring a few brownie points, they say that, you know, we feed a lot of these people uh, and then they make some films and movies out of it and for awards. While we know, we, we acknowledge that we have all kinds of people like that, how do we make sure that we are very genuinely recognized for our on-the-ground uh, connect with the purpose? We have a stated purpose and we live through the purpose. Can you help us learn some examples from your own journey as to how we make sure that we have a purpose and we live through that and, and we, we save ourselves from the make-believe purpose statements, make-believe organizations who actually fake it? So, thank you. Excellent question uh, again, uh, if I may say so. Um, I think, see, brand purpose or business purpose or uh, anything like that requires um, a certain amount of, like we say, three Cs. Um, you know, it needs a certain conviction. Uh, you need to be actually buying into it. And like you were saying, it can come across very easily as a stopgap or, a you know, just for the heck of it, 
uh, statement making and the rest of it is all business. Uh, so you need that true conviction. Um, what you also need is, as I think somebody else also spoke about earlier, a consensus um, in the uh, organization, in the stakeholders. It's not just about the organization, right? Your channel partners, your uh, other partners with whom you work with need to buy into that and have that same purpose that they are willing to put their, you know, uh, rally behind that same purpose. So that consensus is extremely critical. Only then will the... And the, I think the biggest one of them all, beyond everything else, is just to have the courage, right? Because building that brand purpose or that business purpose uh, uh, will need investments, it will need time, it will need patience. Um, it might also need a hit on your ROI for a certain amount of time. Um, but if you have the conviction and the consensus behind it, the courage will take you through. And giving you an example of this, so I am in an industry where, uh, you know, our death knell has been written for years and years. Electrification is happening, uh, government is, uh, you know, claiming 100% electrification in many, many places. Um, there should not be a market for inverters and batteries. Uh, by all practical purposes, we should have either died or have had a, a recession happening in the category um, by now, right? So, but it's not happening. There is growth happening in the core business. However, of course, we are, um, you know, any organization worth its salt is future looking. So we know that there will come a time, if not today, if not in the next five years, 10 years, there will be a time where the core business will start de-growing. Uh, uh, and hence, what do we do for tomorrow's? Um, and as the, you know, session topic was also about uh, building brands for tomorrow, I think it needs a step back and saying building categories for tomorrow. Um, as well. So about five or six years ago is when the organization already identified that renewable energy uh, at a residential, as a residential solution is something that we want to um, invest and build our, uh, you know, kind of shape our purpose towards. And why uh, we are saying so is that, you know, solar is something, I mean, wind energy is very tough to, it, it's impossible to bring in home. Um, those are for, meant for farms and for projects and requires a lot of other uh, things. Similarly for the hydro energy uh, parts of it. But solar energy on the other hand is in the hands of literally every individual sitting in this room as well. Um, there is nothing which stops you as long as you have access to your own rooftop, um, you know, which stops you from generating the electricity that you need for your own consumption. Um, and making a Atmanirbhar India should not be something that is only left to the government. It is something that we as citizens should be contributing to uh, as well. And enabling that um, is what our brand purpose is. And, and how we're bringing it alive is obviously huge amounts of investments in R&D to make sure that the right kind of products at right kind of prices. Uh, because remember, it is for an individual to buy um, and for a middle class household to invest into their own home infrastructure. They need to be at a price point which is affordable and accessible uh, and has a built-in uh, ROI for the consumer, uh, you know, on something like this, because people sit and literally calculate their electricity bills that they are paying on a monthly basis and how, you know, long it will take for them to break even. And we've been able to bring in solutions now which give you the break even in three to four years max and has a life of about 10 to 15 years. So, you know, from those kind of things is where the brand purpose is coming alive on the ground. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I request now uh, Sandeep Ranadeji uh, to respond. Uh, I think you have visibility to and uh, control on a lot of research that happens. Brand health studies gives you access to how brands are actually doing. There are indices, there are indicators for you to look at and see. So, so given that you're at a vantage point, I have two questions to you, uh, Sandeep ji. One is, uh, what kind of dissonance that you notice between the brand vision or the stated brand vision and the pursued uh, uh, pursued path, the the gap between the talk and the walk? Okay, that is that is one. On the other hand, uh, we we often uh, come across. Uh, I, I don't want to take names again. We often come across uh, uh, these these aspects. Uh, when we when we talk about branding, when we talk about you know, we all of us have bragging rights. Uh, it's okay, but only when we cross a particular uh, limit or a particular line, we end up making all kinds of uh, statements. Uh, it is very very difficult, in my belief, and a little bit of experience that uh, all the time you align these two, 
and uh, if i ask any one of uh, the anyone in the audience also if i ask this question you will say yes i'm completely aligned with my purpose and uh, my my brand vision and my brand vision with my business growth and my business growth with uh, uh, all kinds of best practices and uh, uh, co uh, compliances that i'm supposed to follow uh, can you give us a few example even if you don't want to take the names it's fine but may maybe you can cite a category or two and then give us a few examples for us to learn sure thank you so uh, maybe i'll try and answer with both questions combined in an okay. answer rather than and maybe i'll take brand names not to be taken in a in a different way but it is more how consumers are looking at what the brand so so i think every brand will have a vision will have a purpose when it uh, you know comes into play but what we talked about here one i mean you talked about insurance there are so many insurance brand if i am a insurance brand even even if they do have a purpose and positioning how do i first make sure that the consumers know about me look at me differently differentiate myself and then consistently be at my positioning that we are talking about right so taking insurance as an example and what we see this entire tussle between the long term and the short term so yes the brand does have a purpose the brand does have a positioning and it it takes time to build the brand and you talked about patience or you talked about 19 years trying to do the same thing right but what we see is in order to grow or in order to respond to what the market is doing there is sometimes that dissonance to try and grow versus the positioning which i think or the purpose which takes a longer time to build and needs that consistency needs that continuous investment which again i think uh, after launching brands we have seen after one one and a half years of support uh, the support goes down and a new launch suffers so that consistent support and differentiation needed to say that yes i am here this is my purpose and i stand for it and i deliver it and and to give you an example again not that i would know the exact purpose positioning at that time yes positioning we may know are working for those clients but i will not go into details but cite two brands which started around the same time i would say in a bigger way they were in the market and and when i mention the brand names you will see the difference between whether one succeeding today and one suffering today and what would have happened between the purpose with which the brand came in and what they were trying to do to grow whether it was in dissonance or in alignment so one is patanjali and i won't go into details it started growing at a point of time every brand health track we did for other clients not patanjali this brand came in and started impacting all the measures of our client brands and the question started coming in what is happening i mean why is this brand which was nowhere suddenly growing and and we see what has happened to them now whether it is investments whether it is what they are doing on the ground right and at the same time the way telecom market change and jio came in maybe with pricing at that time to cut the market and we don't have so many brands in telecom category for consumers like there is insurance or soaps or shampoos but the way jio came in and the way they have been in the market through that time to where they are now so these are two examples of that wonderful i think that that's very clearly spelt out uh, uh, category and example that you have taken uh, that that helps us learn thank you so much uh, vinit you 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 have been taking the mic so you can no, i actually you can answer uh, without the question also <laughs> and i actually uh, uh, what nupur said and then sandeep uh, you know i want to actually uh, give you an example of where we actually lived up to the purpose uh, it's been 18 years since we've been associated with with one of the ngos called the arpna trust i'm not sure how many of you actually know that it's a small little slum school that is there in uh, mathura road somewhere uh, they have a junior kindergarten they have a senior class also uh, 18 years kids uh, 300 kids uh, we've been supporting them in terms of you know their education all across and i can tell you uh, we've seen that growth and these kids are basically koi uh, rickshaw driver ya jo daily maid ghar pe kaam karne aati hai ya aise jo log hote hain un log ke bachche hain sare ke sare they don't have any means 
the one thing that they wanted to come to those school was because they had mid day meals to pair ko khana milta tha and uh, parents dono bahar hote the aur bacche safe hote the 18 years in this and i can tell you now as we speak right now you know i i went there last year and i met the people and lot of people they saying that my child is now studying law mera bachcha shopper stop mein ja ke kaam karne laga hai can you just see the tremendous growth of those people where we invested from those back lanes where there used to be nothing and they are now getting into the mainstream working class so it takes time it takes patience what i think the fellow panelist said it takes time it takes a lot of patience but you got to continuously continuously believe in that purpose and live with it and i and i think uh, nothing comes short i mean if i say something to you nothing comes short it has to be it has to be a long term but you have to live with it wonderful you need to work for it and it's not easy uh, why why should only the session chair have all the fun so you ask questions and you don't actually get to answer any that that's that's great fun uh, i would request the audience to raise a few questions for us and you can indicate who can actually take those questions audience okay there is nobody in audience who can actually think of a question yes sir yes sir yes uh, uh sandeep ji for you yeah he is talking about patanjali long period of time a brand has to sustain itself for a long period of time to attain that status has it sustained itself long enough because the management has been changing quite frequently there first we had a whole lot of mbas who came in now they are no longer there and the supply chain has has broken down there is a problem in the distribution system how do you see it surviving yes it made a lot of difference in the market in the in the sense that it brought in ayurveda into the country so everybody had to react that but is it going to sustain itself so i'll i'll try and answer it again from the consumer lens not not a marketeer trying to evaluate or you know comment on patanjali and and i think what you said itself had a lot of answers in it so on on whether what happens in the future so one whether you know you pointed out distribution problems whether they brought in something new but whether they sustained or whether they are supporting it the we have seen not only in patanjali and and i would not name the brands but even in other brands a change in the marketing head it self changes the way they go to the market right so all this impacts the long term uh, purpose or the existence of the brand so what would happen to patanjali i mean i i don't know but currently i don't see it very fit to take on the kind of competition or the product it is in and it is suffering does that answer your question that lend itself to the ancillary brands so the mother brand here which i wouldn't say patanjali as the mother brand it was baba ramdev baba who ramdev actually a, a actually brand. helped at a point but i would say right now looking at what the consumers are responding and i'm not talking sales of the product just the brand performance in terms of whether the people are aware what is the imagery of the brand i think it's not helping any more exactly it's been answered sufficiently sir thank you uh, wh one question is that uh, technology itself actually creates new values or reshapes the old ones uh, one very simple thing i am talking about uh, on social media say on whatsapp groups most of us have avoided saying good morning am i right true which otherwise which otherwise when i when i go to your office when i meet you or when i when i come across you we are walking across the streets i say good morning to you namaste how do you look at this how do we navigate these new found restrictions or new found uh, uh, behaviors uh, this is also given by technology uh, do you have any such uh, 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 paradoxes in in what you are actually doing in your own uh, business in your own brand building are there any paradoxes like this which are brought by technology and how do you navigate these paradoxes yeah. shivam yeah i mean that's 
<coughs> that's a fantastic point and I think like you mentioned rightly, I mean consumer behavior is changing constantly. I think one thing that we as marketers have to do constantly is to keep on learning, keep on observing the consumer trends and then adopting towards it. Now, uh, one of the biggest things that, uh, that we saw uh, spike up uh, due to the pandemic was consumption on OTT platforms and video content consumption. Uh, that's a big change in behavior where traditional media consumption went down, cinemas were shut, television went, had a bit of a spike, then it, it's back down again. But digital video consumption is something that we're seeing as a big trend which is continuing to grow. Uh, any such change in consumer behavior or consum consumer consumption patterns, I would say we as marketers should see it as an opportunity, right? I mean, that's an opportunity for you to grab because if it's a new, new, uh, new technology, new phase, new pattern, uh, there are still less people grabbing onto that, right? So the clutter or the competition is lesser. If you're able to grab onto a trend well in advance, it will lead an advantage to you, uh, to the brand in advance. Now, for us, of course, we, we, have, we caught onto that trend way back and we've been investing heavily in terms of media on video, right? We've been investing uh, uh, and even our communication has changed accordingly. So basically, if you see, I mean, another trend that you see, you know, while storytelling is absolutely essential in all the communication that we do, uh, but one of the biggest factors about the consumers today is they have a very low attention span because of the social media, etc. I mean, the trend is they look at, at, at comms only for a few seconds and then if you don't grasp the attention, they'll move on. So it's important for us to also look at storytelling in short formats. And I think that is, that is for example, a, a new trend that we have to leverage as, uh, as marketers to be able to grab attention and to be able to communicate with the consumers on an ongoing basis. Wonderful. Uh, I, yeah, please. Go ahead. So um, as a brand, we stand for play and by play we meant physical play. During COVID and in fact, even before that, we saw a trend of e-games coming up, which are you know, technology driven and kids are onto it. So we cannot completely ignore, but it was like a conundrum to what we stand for. So the way we, uh, you know, worked through this is we launched motion capture games, which we called active games. So in which it is like a video game, which, but you stand like some feet away from the computer screen. So there's not a computer screen and with your motion, the video captures your motion and then the character moves. So therefore, we combine both technology and play to come up with a solution to caveat Wonderful, uh, wonderful, awesome. Yeah, thank you. Wanted yes. to add something. So uh, we leverage technology very well. So one of our brands is Rotus Professional, which caters to 15,000 plus salons and spas across the country. So I'm sure you know that, you know, salons and spas were the worst hit during COVID. So in the past two years, most of the restrictions were there in terms of sanitation and all of that. And a lot of beauticians actually went out of business. So what we did as a company, we introduced uh, India's biggest professional app for Lotus professionals. So basically, any hairdresser, any beautician who's actually a Lotus, um, you know, a beautician who's, who's actually using Lotus products, and even if they're not using it, they are registered on that app. It's India's biggest app. We have currently 35,000 plus beauticians registered with us through the IMLP club. And what we did was we did their medical insurance. We also gave them vocational training. And also instead of bringing people to the salons because they were shut at that point of time, at, it continues till date as well. Most of the people like services to be done at home. So we did virtual salon consultations and made the beauticians reach home to home when they were out of business. So I think it was an interesting aspect for creating a club of such huge stature for the beautician and the hairdresser community in India. So I also would like to add, you know, there were three C's uh, mentioned by Ruchika. So I believe consumer should be the heart of everything. So consumer and community building. So in, in future, Web 3.0 will be the future of uh, technology. And that's why community building and micro communities and macro communities are very, very important. Wonderful. Thank you very much. But in your category, are you the only one who was doing it? I would like to believe yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe that. That, that. That's a very important hint. Yeah. Uh, uh, yourself, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I can actually build on something that Ipshita was just talking about. Uh, on the, you know, and this is something that actually we started before COVID, but I think uh, COVID with everybody has fast track the digital transformation for across businesses. Um, but you know, the whole piece around uh, influencer marketing, 
um, which has been growing bits and pieces and then, you know, then more and more. So we already had a program in place which was quite detailed and, um, you know, in our category, the whole um, discussion-oriented decision-making is very, very high. So everybody wants to know exactly mere ghar ke liye, meri itni battiyan, itne pankhe chalane ke liye, kaun sa inverter, kaun si battery, um, you know, ka combination chahiye, ya mere rooftop pe kitna solar lag sakta hai and things like that. So it's a consultative decision making that happens and it's also a very highly recommendation oriented um, category so it's it's not something that if i was to ask most of you i don't even think you will know the power load um, you know you are allowed at home um, so it's very tough for you to go and buy a specific sku uh, you know just off the top of your head and, and things like that so what we had moved very early on was uh, from the macro influencers to micro influencers and into community um, influencers. So I mean, I know now it has become like a buzz uh, in a lot of different forums. I've been hearing this whole thing on community influencers and you know things like that. And my team had actually attended a, a forum a month, about a month back and things like that. And they had actually come back saying, isn't this what we're doing? Um, so it is there and it, it is a lot of hard work, let me put it this way, all marketers in the room would, I'm sure, agree to identify people sitting in regions, sitting in different languages, um, you know, community uh, influencers are much tougher to do uh, rather than writing a big fat check to a celeb um, influencer and, and getting that one five hour window literally on their feed, um, you know, where you get noticed if at all, um, uh, but it pays off. Because consumers can see through the authenticity. They can actually read, you know, when you are talking, when their kind of people are talking to you, them. Um, it connects that much uh, more. I think in every business, every domain or every category, you have the uh, influence of community or community leaders are playing a very, very big role, yeah. including politics. Have it, we've stayed away from that. Uh, we'll, we'll stick to the electricians and the, you know, the retail. Very good. <laughs> So, so uh, Sandeep ji, is there any uh, media platform that you would not touch? If so, why? Don't think, uh, I mean, in that, but it, it all depends on, I think, one, I mean, even before answering your question, I think today there are so many touch points to reach consumers, and I'm just not stopping at a yeah. media platform. And, and so... Not that every brand has enough budget to go into each and every of the platform. Today, today the budget versus the number of touch points has increased so much. So instead of taking the question as to whether I would touch any of them, I think the idea would which be... Which I would which, not touch. Which I would not touch. So, so it's, I, it's an easier question. Easier question. Anyway, Unburdened by the... By, by the, the ones by that... Yeah, the ones that relate with my consumers and the ones that relate with my category entry points, I would prioritize them than trying to go into each and every. I, I, I don't know if that... Yeah, the, the general suggestion is that we need to have an omni-channel, you know, the, all the jargon I didn't want to use. That's why I reversed the question. Uh, is there any particular media platform that you would not like to touch? And you don't have to answer if it is uncomfortable. Because there is nobody here from those media platforms which will get offended. I mean, I'm just guessing. I don't know. But, but, but you can... You, you don't have to. Uh, so, so uh, Shivam, uh, uh, this question is uh, to you. What kind of difficulties? See, common man doesn't ask you these questions of you're not walking the talk, you're not aligning your that brand vision with the business growth and all these things. What is your positioning? He's not going to ask you the ABCs, right? Somewhere along the line, we as businesses and brands have our own internal metrics and they indicate that we are actually not being accepted, we are not being consumed properly, depending on the category and why. In your own organization or in your previous organization, wherever you have worked, are there instances where you had built up any systems which, which will work for probably a large number of brands also to look at and sit down and take note of those indicators and we must rework on our purpose the, or the way it is communicated and the way it has been practiced. So again, <clears throat> I think very interesting. Now, all of us do these brand tracks with standard measurements of awareness, uh, concentration, purchase intent, preference. But what you said is, are we measuring uh, the parameters that actually measure the brand purpose, right? And I think that's, that's a very interesting one. Now, 
Uh, I'd be very specific here in terms of, uh, you know, what we do at Motorola. Now, like I mentioned, our brand purpose is the use of innovation and technology to give meaningful consumer experiences. Uh, so we measure two things uh, which are, uh, which are interested, uh, interesting for us. One is uh, we measure uh, the innovation quotient from our consumers in all our brand tracks. So every year we also measure is it a brand that you see as innovative, right? Which of these brands do you see as innovative? I mean, one of the questions that we measure. And another parameter that we also measure is proud to own, right? And I think that is, that is again, something that is important for us uh, from the perspective of the fact that if we are innovative, if we are creating meaningful consumer experiences, if we are a brand that the consumers see and want to be associated with, then are they proud to own a Motorola? So these are a couple of new parameters that that we have in our measurement. Uh, <clears throat> uh, assuming that there are no questions from the audience, uh, the same person will not ask the second question. Yeah. yeah. It has to be a real good question that uh, uh, Laksha people will come and hand over the gift to you. Okay. That is up to you to decide. Let me uh, try it. So, um, you know, the brands are, uh, as I understand, part of a business, right? So they are extension of business. They are more to create that, uh, you know, trust with the, what business you have to offer. Now, innovation, as many of you are representing that, also Motorola, I'm a Six Sigma practitioner. I know you started it in the world first. But innovation and ROI, they don't go hand in hand many times. You know, the, it's very difficult for business and brand to justify that investment. How do you tackle that as part of your day-to-day -day jobs? Anyone can answer that. Thank you. Sh Shivam to start. Yeah. No, I think that's a great question. And like I said, right, I mean, even in tough times, see, if you, innovation, you're absolutely right. Innovation requires investments. It requires R&D. Uh, and it requires patience, right, which is all costly. <laughs> so, so that is absolutely true. But in any business, you know, you've got various expense and sources of revenues, right? It's about how you prioritize and what you prioritize, correct? So you can obviously cut costs from, uh, from areas which are not priority for you at that point of time. You can continue to, uh, you know, monitor your costs and, and only invest in R&D, for example, for a time. So for example, for, with Motorola, let me give you an example of what happened. So back in 2017, we were, we were uh, uh, you know, really doing very well in India. We were the ones that actually crashed Flipkart when we went on sale with Moto G series because there was a lot of traffic. We started this entire online sale model. And then there was an advent of many competition brands who came from uh, different countries and who created an atmosphere where there was tremendous competition. And we lost our, you know, edge with respect to innovation or differentiation, right? So we took a step back. We cut on marketing. We cut on distribution, we cut on various other things, but we kept on investing on, on R&D. We kept on investing on innovation because we knew the only way we could come back was to come back with something that really made sense, was really innovative, and was able to make or create meaningful consumer experiences. So just staying true to that is what, in my view, can work. Wonderful. Uh, would, Ruchika, are you saying something? Yeah. 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 Uh, this, we, we're going to wrap it up now. Yeah. yeah. So just a very quick one, lithium ion, I'm sure a lot of you would have heard of the, you know, buzzy battery chemistry that is being spoken about across the world now. Uh, we've been experimenting with lithium ion now as a, you know, innovation that we can bring to consumer homes, um, you know, since the last five years. And uh, earlier this year, we launched the fifth version of it. Um, so what I wanted to say was that uh, being innovative for innovation's sake is never enough. Um, it is an expensive exercise, it is a time-consuming exercise, but it also requires a lot of agility and adaptability to it, right? So the first time you launch it, you fail, you pick your learnings, and then you do it again, and then you do it again, and then you do it again, till you get it right, if you have the conviction which goes with it. And if you have, uh, even more than conviction is the core insight that, you know, there is a place for this innovation in the consumer lives, in the, in the category that you are operating in. And then you have to kind of, um, you know, find the right s solution eventually. Uh, we feel now that we are very, very close to it with the launch that we've made this year. There are still a few pricing corrections that need to be made. And once the global raw material market sorts itself out, that will get sorted as well. The response has been fabulous uh, from consumers. They're absolutely willing to, you know, back you when you get it right. 
and they're equally cruel when you don't. So uh, I, I think innovation and ROI um, over a long period of time can go together. But if you uh, view innovation as a quick solve to a problem, then maybe not. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think the responses have been wonderful. Uh, we have to wrap, up, wrap it up right away. Uh, I want to thank each and every member of uh, this uh, amazing uh, uh, largest planet, largest uh, panel on the earth. Uh, one, wonderful <laughs> members. We have learned a great deal from, uh, from brand research to uh, power backup systems to students by using play as a tool to awaken them and build them as a force and to beauty and wellness kind of industry. Of course, innovative mobiles and financial planning as in Aviva Life Insurance. Wonderful people here and you have been an outstanding uh, audience because one of you stood throughout after having asked that question and one is still standing la in the last line. But, but you have been an outstanding, outstanding audience. You asked very few questions. Thank you. Thank well, you very thank much. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Can I please request the panelists to kindly come up front for a group picture? And also, let's welcome Mr. Atul Srivastav, Group CEO, Laksha Media Group, to kindly present a small token of appreciation to all our panelists and the moderator. I request the panelists to kindly stay back for the group picture. Well, one thing that we all can take away from this panel discussion is uh, in order to understand building brands for tomorrow, it is equally essential to put light and to take in consideration the brands already built in for now. Thank you so very much, panelists.